for more on this trip. I'm joined by Brian Beery. He's the Washington correspondent for Europolitics, the Brussels-based European affairs newspaper. And this is a pretty big deal political-wise because he's in Europe. Obama has his thing to do, which is to ensure that Europe knows that the United States supports all these different countries in Europe. But at the same time, there's this thing that's coming up with Vladimir Putin that's also going to make big headlines as well. Let's start with what the U.S. is trying to accomplish on this trip. Uh, the U.S. mission is very clear. <clears throat> it wants to reassure um, the allies in Central and Eastern Europe in particular who are in Russia's vicinity that um, their commitment to these countries in terms of military support is very real. Um, it can do that uh, because these countries are all NATO allies. Um, so the United States can bring military uh, weaponry, F-16s, it can bring troops, uh, it can bring ships into their area without uh, any uh, possible objections from Russia because all these countries are clearly NATO allies. So Russia may not like it, but it can't really do anything about it. There was a lot of criticism during the Ukrainian crisis er early on that the NATO countries didn't do enough. They didn't say enough, they didn't do enough. I is this a bit of a delayed response perhaps? Uh, in fact, um, the White House announcements have made clear that already in April they were making some of these um, troop deployments and ship deployments in the Black Sea, for example. They've already been doing this. I think this visit is um, President Obama's way of saying, you know, here's what we're doing. Uh, let's talk about what more we can do to support you and that our commitment under Article 5 of NATO, which says that an attack on one NATO member is an attack on all, that that's a very real commitment. And Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, all of these countries have been really urging President Obama to make a strong message. So he's really trying to deliver on, on, um, on these calls. Next stop, G7, excluding Russia. What's being discussed in the room, you think? Uh, ironically, Russia uh, will be the top agenda because item. Because they're not in the room. <laughs> because they're not in the room. And of course, this meeting would never have taken place in Brussels if Russia had not uh, annexed Crimea, because um, Sochi, which ironically, again, very close to Crimea, was supposed to be the host venue. Um, when Russia annexed Crimea, um, they quickly expelled Russia from the G8. The G8 became a G7. Um, Brussels, the EU, for the first time in the G7 slash 8 history, is hosting this event. Um, so the EU institutions, the Commission and Council President will be there, but Russia will be absolutely the number one point on the agenda. Any speculation what might be announced at the end of that meeting? Well, there is a little bit of tension because you have um, the Europeans, um, European Commission, European Council, kind of keen to push for a detente. Um, you know, the, the elections in Ukraine were successful. Um, president Putin has not exactly thrown out the red carpet for the new president, but he has kind of recognized that the elections were legitimate. So the Europeans are kind of saying, come on, this is the time for Ukraine and Russia to make up um, America and Canada um, still more interested in talking a little bit more tough and so it will be interesting to see the kind of language that's used in the final communique. The final stop, Normandy, the beach. This is where essentially the end of World War II began. Russia at that time was an ally. Putin's expected to be there. Obama's expected to be there. Whether they cross paths or not, is there a door open enough where the two can actually have a meaningful conversation? Um, the White House has officially said that President Obama will not have a bilateral meeting with President Putin. However, the choreography is going to be very interesting because uh, he will, President Putin will physically be present for certain occasions where President Obama will be present. There, there is, um, uh, I believe, a, a, some kind of a dinner that the French hosts are organizing. And it will be fascinating to see how the French manage the choreography, given that President Obama has said he will not have a formal bilateral meeting with President Putin, whether or not they actually kind of get to discuss something on the margins, it's, it's kind of up in the air. Very quickly, as someone who follows this political arena very closely, the two sides, a lot of rhetoric has been said over the past three months. Can the two perhaps come together and reach a compromise, at least toning things down? Are, are, we, are we there yet? 
We are not there yet, but I think the elections in Ukraine were a huge milestone. And because the economies are so interlinked at the moment, I think there's a great incentive for everybody to find a solution together. Great insights, Brian, uh, Brian Beery, uh, Washington correspondent for Europolitics. Thank you again. It's good to see you again, by the good way. Good to see you.